Welcome. Today we're going to look at optimizing your brain health for financial planning. So how can that make a difference to us when we are looking for a future during the menopause transition? So what to expect? Acknowledging that this menopause transition can be a little bit of a tra traxing, taxing time for us because we're going to get tired. Some of us can continue to be tired once we're in postmenopause. Brain fog, again, that can continue for some of us. Some of these symptoms that we have during perimenopause can continue afterwards, and that can make it difficult for us to think about what we're doing, how we get in there. And we need to talk about the importance of sleep. Sleep is something that is forgotten because we have such busy lives we're rushing around everywhere and it's one of those things that are easy not to prioritize so we need to think about sleep how that affects our health and how that can affect our brain function and being able to think strategically so who am i i'm tracy mom mom tracy montgomery <laughs> I'm an older single mum to an absolutely amazing daughter. Oh, yes, she is one boss as an individual. And she is very independent, despite some of the setbacks that she has had. But that's not for here. And what do I know about menopause? Well, I thought I'd swerved menopause. I thought I was doing pretty well in my mid-50s. Nada. I thought the fatigue and the stress was due to the world situation at the time. Turns out not, because I had one weekend where everything went totally, totally pear-shaped. The pain, the hot sweats, I was dripping. I thought because of the pain, but probably due to my hormones doing well. What did concern me was the fact that my mum in her early 40s went through perimenopause practically in one night and ended up in hospital having blood transfusions. So I thought, oh, is this happening to me in my mid-50s? Anyway, I had to phone the doctor, on the phone to the doctor, crying, emotions everywhere, pain everywhere. Um, got referred, went to see a gynaecologist, and to be fair, or not to be fair, gynaecologist, hmm, I saw a female gynaecologist, so I thought a female gynaecologist would be quite empathetic. First thing she said when I worked, what worked? Oh, my word, I can't talk today. This is menopause brain. This is what <laughs> I've been left with. My words do not come out. Um, the first thing she said to me was, you should be out the other side. She said I was too old. Hmm. That was the gynaecologist I saw. However... The nurse, HRT nurse, specialist menopause nurse, in my local surgery, absolutely amazing. Because she said it's a huge spectrum. She says the timeline of when this will happen, how it will happen, is huge. So I feel somewhat mm. reassured that I have this amazing, sorry, Alexa's talking in the background, amazing nurse in my local surgery. So... What challenges can be faced by us, menopausal women, in the workplace and when it comes to our financial planning? So we need to think about what it is that can affect how, get my hands out of the way, how menopause can affect us during this phase. We've already discussed how going through perimenopause can affect our ability to function at the level we did previously and how that can then affect where we are in our career, what we do with our career and how we can function in our career. Do we have the same energy level? Some of us lose that and become quite fatigued. Or is this in the brain fog bit? Yeah, that can affect. So if your, fun your job is for you to be at a... Um, presenting management level when you're fatigued you're saying the wrong words you can't you lose yourself sometimes because you don't know what you're talking about that can affect your financial progression and where you are in your standing 
So we need to think about how we can get past or how we can plan for this eventuality. Because if we are having difficulty with thinking, our cognitive thinking, we can have difficulty in planning. I mean, we've all gone to the shops with our list or even forgotten the list and then not brought back the basics like the milk, the eggs, that sort of thing. We've, we can all say we've done that. Is that going to affect us with other things? So if you're thinking about where you're going forward, where you're going to put money, where you're going to put your finances, how you're going to put your finances, that can be affected because your cognitive thinking can become a tad fuzzy. So what can we do to help our financial planning? So we can think about keeping ourselves healthy. Eat correctly or as correctly as we can. So we need to have a nice balanced diet. Think about the things that are good for us, the non-irritants. We need to make sure we're exercising. And as we've already discussed, sleep. On top of that, we can do things like, you know, I always say about crosswords, reading is good for you. Analyzing things is good for you. You don't necessarily need to keep up with the news as is because let's face it, who wants to? But we can, as we get into this phase, there can be so many pulls on us that weren't there previously. So as females, we are the nurturers, we are the carers. So we may be having external responsibilities from other members of family, be it caring for your children's children or for older relatives. Now, making decisions about whether you prioritize that over what you do for yourself can cause it to be too much in your brain. It can become overwhelming. So things then like paying your bills or having enough money to go shopping, they can become pushed to one side. So you can utilize checklists, spreadsheets, you might not have spreadsheets, um, journals, diaries, so that you're planning your financial events is taken out of the way. Remember, we've talked about planning, planning your day, plan that in as well, because it is a rather important moving forward. Bear in mind that there are more women in their 50s finding themselves on their own. There are more women going through perimenopause on into menopause that are leaving jobs. And this can leave a bit of a hole when it comes to your future planning. So we've discussed simple things that you can put in place for your diet. So we often talk about having a Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean diet because it's high in omega-3 fatty acids, leafy greens, those antioxidants, and if it's a colourful plate, there's normally, or well, there should be, lots of vitamins within that, okay? And making sure that you do exercises that you enjoy, because otherwise you're not going to repeat them, that are fairly straightforward. So even walking to the shops, okay? So if you're like me and we're, we're fairly rural, I mean, we do have shops in the village. I think we're a town. Well, not too sure small town anyway we do have shops there variety is not grand but we can get to shops and then a walk around so things like that try and have activities and exercise come into your normal day activities so it's not like an overburden and we often discuss about the fact that you need to let your brain chill so that you can let out all of the stresses. So uh, meditations, yoga is extremely good for getting you to relax and to chill. And 
then making sure that our brain is still being stimulated. So continual learning. This is part of continual learning. Me putting this together for me is part of my continual learning. But for you, it could be the crosswords. It could be Sudoku. I can't get the hang of that one. Anything that keeps the brain stimulated so that the brain itself isn't coming, becoming lazy. So to take the pressure off, though, so that it's not a last minute, oh, I haven't paid this, oh, I haven't planned for this. Get yourself some financial organisational tools. Now, they could be written down. They could be apps. I know that not all of us want to have apps. Spreadsheets. I love a spreadsheet. Journals that can track what you're paying, when and how much so that you know how much you've got coming in, how much you've got going out. And make sure within that that you put reminders for regular tasks to make sure that the pennies are there. And that you can plan for events. I mean, we all know when Christmas is going to be, you know when the birthdays are going to be. And the majority of us can plan for that special day, those special holidays. So we've got the pennies there ready in advance. You may need some professional guidance. Now, the thing is, when you look at, um, you're always going to be advocated a financial advisor. A financial advisor is going to sell you a pension plan, which is basically going to be a um, insurance policy. But you may want to look for a coach who helps you with menopausal symptoms, um, how to get through menopause, what to do during menopause. You may also look for support groups. Remember, we've got menopause, midlife and all that, where you can talk to women who are in the same situation and help you through that. So, what do you actually need to do? We're going to, or you're going to, future cast. <laughs> So you plan for a better financial outcome. If you are financially stable, financially comfortable, that has a positive correlation to your brain health. It reduces your overall stress, 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 and helps to improve your well-being. So if you haven't got to stress about having to pay the bills, you're going to feel better about yourself. And we've discussed quite a few times about how women over 50 are becoming more negatively impacted by future finances. So things like there are more women on their own in their 50s now. There are more women leaving work because of perimenopause. Women are taking on the caring responsibilities, which I think puts on to this next one. And we are finding that more women are finding themselves in pension poverty than ever before. Pension poverty is increasing. The biggest increase is with women. So... This is probably because of the fact that women tend to take career breaks more than men to do the caring, maybe because perimenopause has affected their ability. So that means they've got less ability to pay into their pension pots. And as we know, separations are a lot easier these, these days. There are ways to improve your financial standing as it is. You might want to get another job. However, it may be logistically impossible because there are only 24 hours in a day. You may already have a job. You may have caring responsibilities. And then trying to do another job on top of that to make sure that you have time to look after yourself could be a problem. There are alternatives out there, and some of these may not be the type of things that you would consider because, one, we're female, two, we're of a certain age, 
And three, sorry about that, it's something that you haven't um, encountered previously. You may, though, be open. Now, there are other statistics that say that women are more open to looking at their finances and trying to figure out where they can go than other demographics. So what we would need to think about, or what you would need to think about, is how you could supplement and how you could make that money go further. So what you could do, you could grab a call. We can talk about your situation as it is now. And then we can talk about ways in which we can pr improve your financial standing in the future. So hope that's been useful to you. Scan the code and we can talk. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.